Hi, I'm Steve Endo, and I'm a Microsoft Dynamics GP MVP. And today I'm asking the question, Max versus Top 1, which will offer better query performance in SQL Server? So let's take a look. So which query do you think is faster? In Query 1, we're using the Max function to get the largest document date in the table. In Query 2, we're using top one to get the top one record, and we're sorting the data in the table by document date. Both return the same result, but one uses a max function, the other uses top one relying on sorting of the underlying data. And if you're familiar with SQL Server tuning and query performance, you probably think you have an answer as to which query is faster. And I have some surprising results. So what is the answer? Well, it depends. And that's for real. It really depends. And the results may surprise you. So let's do a demo. I'm going to run some queries using max and top one to compare them. And this testing was performed on SQL Server 2014. So the query optimizer might be slightly different on different editions of SQL Server. But I'm going to show some results that might be what you expected. And then I'm going to show a couple results that are unexpected, or certainly unexpected for me, were very surprising. So let's take a look. So here I have a series of queries against a couple different tables. And the first queries are on the PM30200 table, which was the same table I was working on in my project when I had this question. So in the first very simple query, and it's using the max, the other one is using top one order by doc date. So Let's run this and let me turn on actual execution plan here and let's see what the results are. So in this case, I'm just selecting one record from the entire table, very straightforward. So you see both return the same result. Let's take a look at our set statistics IO. We have a scan count of one, logical reads two. Both are the same. So generally looks like similar performance. Let's take a look at our execution plan. Sure enough we see 50% cost, 50% cost. In theory, both of these queries are virtually identical and should run the same. You see there's a little bit of structural difference here. We have the same index seek, both have a top cost of zero. You see here there's a stream aggregate operation, but the cost is zero. So they look identical. So one might say, well, it doesn't really matter. Whether you use max or top one, the query optimizer is able to figure it out and it's essentially the same, it knows better. So that's one option. So let's try a little more complex query. So in this case, I'm going to perform the same operation but on three different tables and I'm going to union them. So let's say that I wanna find the largest document date from PM open, or excuse me, PM work, PM open and PM history. So let's see what we get. And then we'll do the same operation using, or same queries using the top one operator and see what we get there. And these will be bundled into a CTE and allow us to compare both of those. So let's run that. So we get the same results, of course. And let's look at our statistics and IO here. So we see scan count one, logical reads two, they're both the same. So as far as we can tell here, they look the same. Let's take a look at our execution plan. Hmm, we're starting to see a difference. So with a little bit more complexity, it looks like Max is offering better performance with 37% cost to 63% cost for the top one operator. And in this case, I believe that the cost comes down to the sort. So the order by operations in the second version of the query have a relatively high cost. So it's having to perform that sort on looks like PM 10,000 in this case, and that is incurring a cost that I believe is pushing this to have a higher cost relative to the batch. So that might correspond to another theory you have that max performs better than top. So Let's move on and take a look at a table with more records. So here I have the SEE30303 table in Dynamics GP. 
And in this table, in my test environment, I have 73,000 records. So quite a bit more than the 700 some records I have in my PM tables. So let's see how it behaves here. Now I've done a few modifications to try and produce a little bit more complexity in these queries, but still relatively simple, max versus top one on SEE 30303. So let's run that. So here we have logical reads, 3536, same for both queries. But again, we have 3763. Interesting. So this seems to reinforce the concept that max, in this case, offers slightly better performance than top one. We have a clustered index scan on both. But here, look at that, we have our sort cost of 45%, pretty significant. So I believe that is pushing the cost of the top one operation higher than the max. Okay, so you might think you know that max offers better performance. So let's just simplify that, see how this behaves. So let's get rid of the where clause and let's just do a straight query for one record. Okay, so interesting, we see a different result. Scan count one, 3536 logical reads. Scan count five, 3936 logical reads. Hmm, something has changed. So now we see a bigger gap. We see 38%, 62, and we start to see some parallelism come in here to try and improve performance. Well, Let's try to get some raw numbers without the parallelism, see how it behaves. So let's enable option max DOP1 to set degree of parallelism, parallelism to 1, and let's rerun it. So now, interestingly, our logical reads match. But look at this, 25% versus 75%. Eliminating the parallelism decreased the performance of the top one, which is what you would expect. Query Optimizer presumably knows that it needs to have those parallel operations to improve performance. Okay, so we're still seeing Max as behaving better, per producing better performance. So now let's step it up a little bit more. So I have the IV30500 table, which in my case has 147,000 rows in it. So perhaps this one behaves a little bit differently when we really push more data through it. So let's try this. So in this case, um, this is the simple query using uh, option max DOP. Let's start without option max DOP and see how it behaves. Okay, so logical reads three, pretty simple. And look at that. For this data set, IV30500, we're back at 50-50. Max versus top one, in theory, produces similar or the same performance. Hmm, that's interesting. Let's, this shouldn't matter, but let's just double check, see if this alters behavior. And we get the exact same results. So degree of parallelism didn't matter in this case. So let's make the query a little more complex. So IV305 still, Let's add a WHERE clause with item numbers and a WHERE clause on the posted date and see how that behaves. So let's disable this option. Okay, so here, seeing same scan count and logical reads, 50-50. Huh, what is going on here? No matter what I tried, I couldn't get max to perform better than top one on this table. And it appears to be due to this non-clustered index AK5, which includes a date. So the doc date, or excuse me, the posted date is included in this. So there is no cost to the order by. So it can very easily order by the posted date index and select the top one just as easily as it can do the max. So in the case where you have a nice index available for the date you're sorting on, it looks like the performance can be equivalent. But that's the caveat, if you have that index. So let's try a different field. So rather than 
querying post a date where we know we have the non-clustered index, and we can do that index seek, let's choose a field like transaction source where we do not have that index available. You would think, or I would think, that, well, let's revert back to max having better performance than order by. Well, what's going on here? Our max has 2143 logical reads, whereas our top one only has five. I did not expect this. What is going on? Let's take a look at our execution plan. Here we see a table scan. So because we change the field we're querying, on the max and the order by, the query plan changed dramatically and it pushed the max operator query to perform a table scan, which is obviously very expensive. And that is now 99% of the cost of the batch versus 1% for the top with order by because the order by is able to utilize this non-clustered index. And it knows it can use the non-clustered index and then do an ID lookup and pull the value that it needs. Really fascinating and unexpected results. So this one surprised me the most. So in this case, given these indexes and this table, the max, in theory, has very poor performance relative to a top one with order by. Aha, but wait, you might say, look at this. SQL is saying, well, the reason this is so poor is because we're missing an index. And we can add an index with a significant impact. Okay, let's give that a try. Because you can never assume these indexes will solve your problem, but you can always easily try them. So let's create this non-clustered index, take its advice, say, great, let's add this index on item number, include transaction source for an included column. Let's see what happens. So I'm going to add that index. Great. Now let's rerun this query. Huh, 226 and 5. Still not looking good for Max. And sure enough, even with the additional index that was recommended to us, we're at 90% cost on the Max query and 10% using order by. So if you're making any broad assumptions of Max versus top one with order by, you have to be careful because certain situations on certain tables might give you very unexpected results. And the table may not be indexed optimally for your query or the field you're dealing with in order to handle max or top. So I thought that was really interesting and it goes back to the old adage, it depends and you can never make broad assumptions on many SQL Server operations. You can't say this one performs better than that. Oftentimes, max should perform better and order by should produce a higher sort cost and order by as many other consequences that can be negative. But in this case, very surprisingly, even with an additional index, it has a higher cost. So what are the lessons here? Well, the performance of any given operation in any given query appears to depend on the table, how much data is in that table and the type of data, maybe the, even the distribution of the data. Which fields are involved in your query and how you're using them? Are they being operated on with a function? Are they part of a where clause? Are they part of the select statement? And then finally, obviously, indexes make a huge difference. And despite all of that, even if you have a good idea of what all those things are, you may still get unexpected results in your query execution plan. It just goes to show you, you need to try a few things, check the performance, change a few things and do a comparison and see if you can achieve better results using things that you might not expect to improve performance. So I hope you found that interesting. Feel free to follow me on Twitter at Steve Endo or check out some other articles on my blog at dynamicsgpland.blogspot.com or contact me at precipioservices.com.